Oh, hi, Don. I don't have it uh, installed Home Designer Pro 2016 yet. I just don't have the software. But here's 2015. And uh, relative to dimensions, they don't change that much version to version. First of all, I'm going to turn off uh, the roofs. They're kind of cluttering up my screen. I'll go over to Display Options and hit the R key to go to the R's. <laughs> okay, turn off roof planes, baselines, I don't need to see that. Okay, we're just going to talk about dimensions. And as soon as I uh, created this, these automatic dimensions came up. I thought I'd look at why they did what they did and where they locate to. You can see that they're going to the outside edge of the framing. You can zoom into this corner. You can see it's pointing right there to that corner. And why does it do that? Okay, that's under Edit Default Settings, Dimensions. Click on Edit. We get this dialog here, which controls automatic tendencies. Uh, how much uh, this line separation, as I recall, I think that's uh, the dis this distance here. It's set to 80, 18 inches. And the reach is explained in the reference manual as uh, like if you, well, I don't need to explain the reference manual. Look it up. <laughs> I'll probably say it wrong. I'm going to go over to. Uh, Default settings, di dimension now. We'll open that dialog again. And the important thing I want you to see here is the extension, uh, locate objects. And this is how it locates objects. Right now it's set to wall dimension layer. And uh, it's set to measure to the, uh, yeah, size of openings. Now there's no openings, but let's put some openings in there. Put a window and a door. You can see that it doesn't auto. Okay. Apparently, auto dimension is on because it automatically dimensioned there. But let's say if I wanted to dimension to the center of openings, I could go to Edit Default Settings, Dimension, Edit, and Locate Objects, and we'll change that from sides to centers. Now, it didn't automatically update, but that's okay. Next time I build them, they'll go to centers. So we'll go, where is that icon? No, the auto dimension. Well, where is that icon? Maybe it's under build dimensions. I don't see it in the... Uh, no, it's not there. Buoy. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go auto exterior dimensions. Okay, I didn't change. Let me change the. Um, see. Uh, my videos are totally unrehearsed, <laughs> as you can tell. I'll go back to dimensions. There it is. I, I didn't change auto, auto dimensions. We'll change the locate objects there to uh, centers. I changed the defaults, but not for auto dimensions. Okay, now they're going to the center. Get the idea. <clears throat> now, I said... I'll just test that. We'll go over here to the auto. Uh, yeah, we'll set that. We'll go to dimensions. I'm going to change this line separation to uh, 36 inches. See, I'm going to change that line separation to 36. And then we'll generate those again. I think, uh, let me check that. How. 
what is the distance from there to there? That's about three feet. I set it to three feet, now it's three feet. It didn't move, it, there wasn't such a dramatic change from 18 inches to uh, three feet, but you get the idea. If you want to uh, move a dimension string, you can just click on it and see right there where my cursor is ch changing to a double arrow? You just drag it. And if you want to, uh, so you can move those things around if, if, if they're in a bad place or like in the same location as the wall, you can just hit the tab key and then get the, get, get the dimension and move it. Uh, <clears throat> let me put another window in here and let's say that uh, now I want to dimension that window. I could auto dimension again, but I can also just click on the dimension string and see that little pip there sticking up? I'm going to drag that down to the window center, and now it's dimension. I'm moving the window now with the arrow keys. Or you can just click on the dimension and uh, do it that way. Uh, see what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't usually use these arrows. That's under Edit Default Settings, Dimension. We'll go back to that dialog, and there's an arrow. I normally use this arrow. Arrow, and then pick something else. And I click Done, and yeah, let's see it changes. Also, I'm going to click on the Dimension tool and go to this uh, in the end dimension tool here and left click on it to activate it. If I want to measure from the inside wall to the center of that window, I just left click and drag and wait until it snaps there. Now if I, if I want the dimension not to measure from right here but over here, I'll just left click on that and drag it over there. I can also drag it to the center of the wall or drag it to another edge or drag it to the sheetrock or the, from the siding on the other side. You can put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it in the center and then I'm going to use this little pip here to uh, create a new dimension point. So now I'm measuring from here to here three and a half inches and then from here the rest of the way of the cross. If you want to get rid of dimension points that you don't want then you can just put your cursor on them until the cursor looks like a double arrow and then left click and drag off screen and then it gets rid of the dimension point. So I'm going to move this dimension point, left click drag, to the edge of the window and then to the other edge of the window, back to the center. I think uh, with windows you can measure to the casing. Yeah, it'll measure to the casing or to the edge of the frame, the center of the window. Or you can do both sides using the uh, additional dimension point tool. So there's a lot that you can do with it. It just takes a little practice and knowing that those features are there. And they're uh, described in the reference manual. And there's some uh, basic tutorials on how to use dimensions. Uh, something I don't use a lot of t a times, a lot of, is the angular dimension, but it's sometimes helpful. You just left click and drag. And if you left click and drag it to the outside, then you get the reverse angle, 270 degrees, or drag it in to get 90 degrees. Go back to that tool again, and you just left click and drag. Get the idea. <clears throat> it's a useful little tool, and it's really easy to use. It just takes a little practice to, to learn it. I'm going to move this over to uh, six feet. And that's a, a basic uh, tutorial on uh, automatic and uh, manual dimensions. Uh, and also in the, the tools that are here. Uh, I find the uh, measuring tape 
when I would need just a, a quick a quick uh, measuring, uh, that that's a, an easy way to do that, and it doesn't create create a graphic item you have to handle later. Now this tool here, point to point, it actually when you left click it creates a point, and then when you uh, release the mouse it creates another point. Let me drag this over here. See, there's, there's points there. The other dimension tools look for dimensionable points and that dimension tool creates its own dimensional points and I, I use it from time to time when it's more convenient to just have these points here to dimension to than some um, hard to uh, dimension point in the uh, in the drawing. Of course this one's pretty obvious it's wall to wall you see the tool, yeah, interior dimension. It'll automatically draw between, uh, when you left click drag, between two walls. Now I've got it set to surfaces. I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, dimension layer. So it's going to, it's going to measure automatically to one side or the other of framing. But let's say you're doing a remodeling job and, and you're not building it from scratch. I'm going to go up here to edit, delete objects, and then uh, all floors, and we'll delete all the dimensions. Where's the dimensions? There we go, manual and automatic. Oh, I forgot, I didn't do it right. There we go, I forgot to hit the delete button. Now I'm going to go up to edit default settings, dimensions. Click on edit and we'll change the uh, locate objects to surfaces. For like remodeling, you're going to be measuring something that's already there. You're not creating it from scratch. So <clears throat> you would want to measure from actual measurable points. In other words, you want to, go, want to measure from the sheetrock and not from framing. So if this room had already existed and you put a tape across there, it would be 12 foot 1. It's not going to, if you have the, the default set wrong, then you'll be off by a half an inch in both directions. If you're measuring an existing room and you measure use in, in the software, you have it set to a dimension layer, then it's going to be off by an inch. Whereas uh, with that default set that way, it just automatically picks up your intention. So you set your defaults to, to pay based on uh, what ex exactly the type of work that you're doing. So I use surfaces for remodeling and uh, dimension layer from new, for new construction. And sometimes in remodeling I'll use both because the existing structure you measure from existing uh, dimension points and then you're going to add a room on to that and so for the room you would want to use new construction type uh, dimension points otherwise you know they get out in the field try to build the thing and uh, it becomes kind of confusing but I hope this uh, helps you out uh, clarify uh, some of the problems you're having uh, remember this this pip here I call it a pip I don't remember what it's called in the reference manual but you can create additional dimension points and you can always click on a, on a string and move it around to where you want it and also uh, there's one other thing I'm gonna open this dimension string here <coughs> excuse me okay you don't have that feature in uh, Home Designer Pro never mind I, I was thinking of a feature that you have in Premiere <coughs> excuse me but you don't have it in Pro let me check and see if it's in the big dialog. I don't think that it is. Yeah, that's a Chief Architect Premier thing. So never mind. Okay, well you did have this format. See, like the smallest fraction is set to 1 16th. Let me de demonstrate that. That's kind of a good one. I'm going to uh, just move this wall manually a little bit and yeah we get those fractions in there <clears throat> and so a drafting teacher would tell you that you would click on this wall 
and click on that dimension and get rid of the fraction. Like that, and then hit the enter button, and then that got rid of that fraction. I'm going to hit Control Z to put that back. You can also get a fraction, get rid of fractions. I don't recommend this to you. I'm just saying that you can do it. Uh, for some of the contractors that I work for, the builders, they have me go into uh, this format here, and I'll set the smallest fraction to one half. And see what that does? It just rounded it off. It added one eighth of an inch to that dimension just by a, a default setting under format. I normally when I'm creating a plan from scratch I use the 16th but uh, a lot of times on remodeling uh, I'll set it this to one half or a quarter you know some some of my clients want an eighth and you can control that here by the smallest fraction and also uh, there's a, a unit I'll tell you what I do for, like for site plans uh, site plans you would normally have uh, a dimension on the outside of a building and that would be set to let me open this up oh that's right you can't alright <clears throat> I can go over here to format and change this to just where it just displays feet only and we'll have it displayed two decimal points so like in a site plan it's always in decimal feet and, and inches and so forth and uh, in pro you can display that but it's a it's kind of an all or nothing in cheap architect you could you could do it by but dimension string you could change this dimension string could be uh, fractional inches and this one could be uh, metric or um, did you know decimal decimal uh, units but in pro you can do one or the other but you can do one or the other okay that's it the it for this uh, tutorial thank you for watching